A big thank you to all of you who like, comment, subscribe and share my videos or through other means support this channel. You are what makes this channel grow and become a resource for other people to learn from. Enough about how awesome you are, back to the video. Welcome back. So in this episode we're going to be continuing from the last episode where we basically did most of the design and now we're going to start adding some actual logic to have our widgets appear and interact. So starting off we'll open up our content browser and we'll go to our um, widget called card hand. Opening up the graph, we have this event which was uh, that we were adding a card to uh, the card hand. Now, opening up the HUD, we can also see that we actually did the logic to, when we click the button, we actually create a random card and send it over to, to the card hand. So everything is done up to this point. What we want to do now is essentially start working with that uh, card information that we had. So we get the card information here and we want to create a card now and we have a widget for that. So we can just go and say uh, create uh, widgets and the widget we want to create is the card widget and the owning player here we can get uh, owning player and that will get the controller that we want to put in there uh, so now we have the card widget here but this information here is not being handled by the, the card widget in any way right now so let's fix that we'll open up our card widget go to our graph and inside of here we want to create a variable we want this variable to be card info we want it to be of the type s card info that we created the structure and we want to expose this as instant editable and expose on spawn compiling and saving now and going back to our card in hand widget we can refresh our create uh, card widget and we get the card info uh, information here now so we can actually just plug this in and this means that upon creation of this card it will be aware of this information that we're sending in this means that this widget can now make use of that information. So let's go ahead and populate our card based on this information then. So uh, we can drag this structure out like so and remove the pre-construct and remove the tick. At the point of construct, which is the begin play for a widget, we will have this information available. So this will be populated. So what we can say here is we can take the card image, for example, and we can say set brush from texture and hook that up to our construct and then we do a break from our card info which means that we expose all the individual variables for that structure we can now hook up our image to our texture so now all of a sudden when we create a card we will have a card created that will have this uh, image set on it if we were to play now and click add card nothing is shown we'll get to this in a little bit later but for now this is working just trust me i'm not lying to you we'll continue with adding the other information uh, so what we want to have is uh, we want to have uh, our card name so we have a card name text there we go we want to set the text of this one this this might not look very pretty but this makes it take a little bit less uh, space and then we hook up the text over there and uh, then we can take the description like so and we can do the set text again and we hook it up like so we'll take the description and then lastly we'll take the background background we'll take the background color image reference and we'll say uh, set color and opacity i believe yes and we'll hook that one up and the color that we want to use is this one okay so now all the information is actually being set here as um properties of the card visually speaking 
So we can compile and save for now. We're gonna be happy with that for now. Um, going back to our card hand, we have now created the card, but we haven't actually added it anywhere. We have our card overlay, which is where we will be adding things. So we'll drag up that reference and say add, and you have a bunch of different things here, but this is a panel. We're gonna add a child, and the content that we're gonna be adding is the widget that we've just created. So we can compile and save, and this part should now be done. So let's go back to our uh, level and click play, and we can click add card. Now you can see we actually get our card added. We can see that it's the fancy card, which has blue text on it, and we can open up. That's not what I wanted to do. Uh, let's do this, this, and so. And I'll open up the here, and we can see the fancy card is the blue card. So it was actually corresponding correctly there. Now we got the powerful card, and it has been layered on top of the other one. Uh, straight up, we can see that there's something wrong with our layout here. So. Uh, the reason we didn't see this was if we go to our card and we go to our background image, zoom in a little bit, change the color from not outline, the color and opacity to, I don't know, purple. We can see this is the issue. Uh, our uh, rounded image is not being properly rendered. And the reason it's not being properly rendered, we can go back to, actually, let's keep it at pink for now so we can see is because I didn't change the rounding type here to be fixed radius, which allows it to be rounded around the edges like so. And yeah, we want to go back to color and opacity black again here, like so. And that should be fine for now. Let's go back and test again. You can see add card and it looks okay. The border around it doesn't look exactly like I want it to, though. I want to have a little bit of a thicker border, border, so we'll go to the card, we'll go to our overlay, and we'll say we want some padding. Let's say we want to have 10 in all directions, like so. This should give us a little bit of a buffer as opposed to the, the border. And if we check it out now, we can see that we have a black border on, and that looks better. I like this better. And I can also see that we have a typo in here that's coming from here because of, I had the wrong keyboard setting before and I didn't notice it. So we'll just change that. Everything else looks fine. So we'll save that for now. Okay, so now we can actually generate cards to our hand. That's a great start. Now, when we added multiple cards, we could see that they were layered on top of each other. That's not what we want, obviously. We want them to sort of fan out, so sort of like a card hand is actually existing. So we want to add some functionality to allow that. So we want to have a function that allows us to reposition our cards. To do this, we will want to do a few things. First of all, we want to create a variable of the type um, card, you can call it card widget references. Uh, this will be of the type w card, so the widget for a card that we've created and object references for that. We also want to change it to be an array so we can have multiple ones. This will be our different widgets that we actually have in our hand so we can manipulate them individually later on. Uh, so dragging out this, we want to say every time we add a card, we want to add it to our array here. So we'll do like so, hook it up like so. And then the widget we created over here is the reference that we want to add over to the array. So, okay, so now we're saving all the cards as we're actually creating them. So that's good. The second part is we wanted to actually update the card positions. So let's remove the tick there and create a custom event. We'll call the custom event uh, update card positions. Seems good. And what we want to do here is we want to make sure that all of the cards are getting their proper position. So the cards we have are the ones that are gonna be contained in our widgets reference array here. That's all the, the widgets that we have. So we will loop on each of these different card elements. And we will say each of these cards should go to a new position. Now, 
how we're going to be doing this is uh, taking into consideration a few different things. Based on where the card is in the hand, based on a few different uh, parameters that we will be setting up later, we want all of those things to influence where the card is actually going. And we will do this by creating a function that sort of encapsulates our functionality for us. So create a function, we call this uh, calculate uh, card position. Okay. Uh, as an input, this will take a index. So we'll take an integer and we'll call it card index. As an output, we want to have uh, the information of where or how this, this widget should be placed. And for that, there is a structure called uh, widget, widget transform, this one. So we'll choose that and we'll say that this is our card destination. Okay. We compile, save, and then we go back. And now here we can say that, okay, uh, by calculating our card position using our array index, we should be getting a position for this card where it should be uh, uh, positioning itself. Um, so we will now be delegating this information to the card. So we will essentially be going like, let's say we have three cards in our hand. We will be calculating each of these three different cards where their position should be. And we'll essentially say to them, this is where I want you to be. And then leave the, it up to the card to handle that. So we need to put some functionality inside of the card. Um, inside of the card, we can create a graph and create a graph. We can go to the graph and here we can say we want to create a custom event. Uh, custom event, add custom event. And let's call this uh, start reposition. Okay. This wants to take in the information of the widget transform, which is telling us where it should be. We can call this destination transform, like so. Okay. In addition to the destination or the transform where it's supposed to be, uh, we may want to have something like an input that um, decides how quickly we get there as well. So we can add another input here. We can choose to make it a float and we can say that this is supposed to be our interpolation speed. So this interpolation is essentially, we're, we're using it as the, the speed for where to uh, animate or transition between a point and a different point or a value to a different value. So that's what that's doing here. And once we get this information, we'll immediately just say we want to save this information. We can save it as interpolation speed. That will be fine. Uh, the destination transform equally, we want to promote to a variable. So actually, let's disconnect this and go uh, like so. So we can hook them up like so, and it looks a little bit better. So now we're saving these two pieces of information. That's good. Now, since we're doing an animation and this is a widget, it's not an actor, um, we don't have the same amount of freedom to uh, make use of certain nodes in a widget. Uh, so we will actually be making use of a event that I normally try to tell people to avoid. And that is the event of tick. Since we are making use of the event tick, we will try to use this as responsibly as we possibly can because we want to run as little logic as possible inside of the tick because we don't want to overload the tick with logic so that uh, we lose performance on it. Uh, how we do this is we're going to be creating a gate. The gate is a flow control object which allows you to flow information through it uh, during certain uh, points in time. So when the gate is open, that allows this 
uh, execution node to run. If it is closed, it will immediately stop here. Then you can also choose if you want to start closed or not. So what we want to do here is we want to say, when we get the command to say start reposition, we want to open this gate. Then at some other point, we want to decide it's time to close this gate and we'll create a custom event for that and call this uh, reposition completed. So when reposition is completed, we'll say close the gate again, meaning that the tick won't run and the tick needs to be hooked up into the enter. This allows us to have this logic in the tick run as little as possible for us. Now, what logic do we want to run here? Well, we want to decide or determine if the card has reached the, the position that we have told it to. Uh, to make this a little bit easier to overview, we're going to be creating macro. We're creating a macro which we will be calling has card reached destination with a question mark because yes. Um, and inside of here, we want to have first of all an input node. Uh, we want to make that an executable pin. We want to rename it execute lowercase so that it disappears as a name there. It just makes it look cleaner. As the output, we want to add two outputs. We want to make sure that they are both the execution pin as well. And we can call the first one uh, destination reached. We can call the second one uh, incomplete movement. Movement, like that. Okay, so if we go back to our code now here where we have the gate, we can actually hook this up like so, and we can say, okay, we clearly are getting two branches or two paths to go here, depending on what our situation is and how we're supposed to act in that situation. So uh, going back into the macro, let's add some logic here. The first thing we want to check is of course, have we reached our destination? So let's create a helper function for that. We can call this uh, reached destination. And we'll make this function pure so that it's a little bit easier to uh, view in our logic later on. Um, inside of this, we want to uh, check if we are where we want to end up. And remember, we have a destination transform here, which we have gotten uh, informed about that this is where we are supposed to be. But where are we currently? Well, if we get a reference to self, drag off from that, we can get transform. And you can see here that it says, this is the, the render transform of this widget. So these are going to be the same information essentially. Now, breaking these apart, we can see their individual information pieces in form of variables that they have. We want to take into consideration those things that are important to us here. So, for example, the translation here represents our position in the world. If we were to break that further, you can see that it consists of an X and a Y position. So if we were to type in equal here, we get a few options here. We can set equal exactly, not equal to, and equal. If you just choose the equal one, you can see that we get two inputs that are blue and one that is green. We'll hook up the translation in the second one. That means that these two are being compared. And this will be the tolerance value of how close it needs to be before we decide ah, it's, it's, it's close enough. Um, this is usually uh, needed when you're using uh, comparisons with float because floats are usually, they are not exact values, uh, they tend to be. So um, yeah, we not, don't need to get into the specifics about it, but that's why this appears because of handling with floats. Anyway, using this, we can determine if we are in the right position, but we also may want to make uh, some consideration for angle because we might want to, if we fan our cards in our hand, we, we want to take into consideration the angle as well. So we can compare this as well by typing in equal marks like so. And then we want to check against both of these. So if both of these are true, we can type in and here and I and the boolean. 
If both of these are true, then we have reached our destination. So we'll right click and type in return. And in the return node as an output, we will drag out our result from this. So now we have our function here that says if we have reached our destination or not. We go back, we drag out our reach destination function here, and this is all good. However, since we are creating widgets on the fly in this widget, uh, well, not in this specific widget, but in the widget uh, above, uh, we don't know if the widget is created yet. Um, well, we don't have the dimensions of the widget because a widget that's created won't take up space, known space for the widget itself until the following frame. And we might want to take into consideration things like how big a card is, for example. For that reason, we want to make some consideration for the card size. Um, so what we'll do is we'll create another function that's called uh, has card size been established. Let's put an exclamation, no, not an exclamation, a question mark at the end of that. So it's super clear. Uh, we'll make this one pure as well. Uh, so what we want to do here is we want to have a return node that tells us if this criteria has been met, right? So if we right click and type um, get, well, there's a bunch of different types of uh, ge geometry. Uh, we have the cached geometry. Uh, we have tick space geometry. We have paint space geometry. All of these are different things that not will not be updated until the, the, the widget has existed for a frame. We can get the cache geometry here, for example. If we do this and get local space, uh, I think it was local space, is it not? Uh, lo local size, maybe? Yes, local size. Okay. So we get local size, and this is what we want to uh, figure out if it is set or not. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll break this. And we'll, whoa, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, we want to check if these values are set essentially. So we'll make sure that these are both not equal from zero. And if that is true, return the result for the function. Okay. Going back again, we can now check our has card size been established and we have both of these criteria now that we can take into consideration to see if we need to move or not. So if, uh, let's do this, we'll make a branch and say like so, we'll hook it up like so, we'll make a true and a false. If we have reached the destination, then destination is reached, right? But we can't know our destination completely if our hand or our card size has not been established yet. We don't know where we are in space, essentially. Uh, so we want to make sure that both of these are true if we're to say that the destination is reached. If either of these are not true, then we'll say that our movement is incomplete, either because we can't move yet or because we haven't moved yet. So this is the, the scenario that we end up in then. So if we go back to our card now, we can see that, okay, we have determined now if we are reached to the destination, either because, uh, well, because both of the criteria have been lifted or completed, or one of the criteria are not can be completed here. And that's why we're in this pathing. So now we need to figure out what to do during these things. So um, if the destination is reached, then we have this function or event that we want to call on to close up this gate because we don't want the tick to run. So we'll drag off here and say reposition completed. Now that branch is done, so that's all good. The next part is a little bit more complex because now we need to say, okay, we need to move. So how do we do that? Well, 
Now we could take into consideration our card size and stuff like that and do some calculations for our transform. Uh, to keep this a little bit simpler, at least in the beginning, you can always expand upon this further afterwards as well. We're just going to be saying that, okay, the, the destination transform that we get, it's fine. Uh, we're just going to be using that. Now we need to interpolate towards that position from where we are with our card currently. Uh, to do that, we will be creating a function. Um, since interpolation is something that could be used generically, like uh, in many different places, uh, and this might not be the only place that we want to use it, we can again make use of our blueprint function library that we created before. And let's see, here we have it, cards. And we can create a function here that we say, um, interpolate the words position, right? And as inputs, uh, we want to take a few things here. We want to take um, uh, widget transform, that is our current position. We want to take a, another widget transform that's going to be our destination transform. And in addition to that, we might want to inform also about things like, actually, let's not add the fourth one. We have this one to have float, make it a float and say, call this delta. So this will be the delta time, meaning uh, the amount of time that has uh, persisted between two different uh, points in time. So this is usually the time between ticks. We add another one and keep that as a float as well. And we can call this the interpolation speed. Okay. So with all of this information, we can easily just make a, a gradual transformation of something between two different points. So if we take the current uh, position here, break it, we can say that we want to move from this translation to another translation. We can do this by dragging out here and saying Victor 2D, sorry, that was not your phone, that was my phone, uh, interpolate 2, right? This is a, a function that allows you to do exactly what we want. We have a, a, a current position, we want to go to a certain destination. Depending on the delta time and the interpolation speed, uh, we will move towards that location. So we'll do a get delta. That's not the one we want. We want to get delta and get this variable one. So this one would correspond to the input that we have here if we want to not drag our uh, lines between them too much. So we can do this instead. Equally, we can do the same for get interp speed, like so. Now we need to get the destination that we want to interpolate towards. So we'll get this one and we'll break it and we'll hook up that translation like so. So now we're starting to create a, a new uh, result here. So we'll create a return and make sure that our output from this is going to be another widget transform. Our calculated widget transform, if you will. So we'll call this one a new position. <clears throat> and we'll create one by dragging out from here and making it. That allows us to input the different variables one by one. And we have so far calculated our translation, so we'll hook that one up there. Now we need to make a calculation for, actually we, yeah, of course, we need the angle, of course, also. So uh, the angle is not a vector 2D, so this, this uh, function node won't work. So we'll drag out from angle and instead we'll type in f interp 2. So this one is for f in, as in float. So we have the same situation where we take the angle as the current and the angle as the target. We use the delta over here, we use the interpolation speed over here, and we hook it up like angle so. So now we have completed our function to interpolate towards, and we'll make use of this in our card now. Going back to our card, we can say um, interpolate towards position. The positions we want to make use of here as variables are going to be 
uh, for the destination transform we have the destination transform since earlier for the delta we have well actually we don't have the, the delta here we get the delta from the tick so we'll drag it like so you can also readjust it a little bit maybe that's a bit better uh, interpolation speed we got as an input as well from uh, when we're setting over here in the start repositioning current position is going to be the widget itself so we get a reference to self and we're going to get transform like we did earlier this is our render transform currently so this will be used as our current uh, position like so only step that's left for this now is that we actually use this. So if we get a reference to self again, we can call the set render transform. And this takes the structure that we have just created as an input. So we immediately get the angles and the position and everything like that. So now we have a situation where our tick goes through and repositions us according to the, the information that's being sent in as a start reposition here. So we compile, save, and go back to our card hand again. So we have calculated a position here. We want to make use of it in the card. The card is the card element over here in the loop. So we'll go and say uh, start reposition, like so. Hook up the position over there redirect our targeting node a little bit so it's a little bit clearer to see and the interpolation speed that we want to make use of here is going to be um, well we don't have something set right now right so let's create a variable let's call it animation speed and let's make it a float and not a array but a single value and let's set it to a default value by compiling and then setting it as 10, dragging it out and making use of it over here. So this is something that you could either hard code, make use of this variable or just use by parameters later on, like I'm going to be showing. Anyway, so now theoretically, when we add the card, we create the widget, we add a child and then we have added it to our uh, array of references here but we're not actually updating the position. So we want to make, use, uh, make sure that we do that. So we call the update card positions. So when the card is added, we should theoretically be going in here making sure that all the cards have their positions calculated by calling this function, then sending that information to all the individual cards and letting them interpolate towards that position. Now we currently don't have a lot of information coming out to this calculate card position because we don't have anything written in here yet. Uh, what we'll do is we'll create a make widget here. So we actually have the result that we want to create. And then we'll create some supporting functions or methods to allow us to get this information. So the translation here, for example, is a vector 2D, uh, make vector 2D and we want to create those values we also want to create this value so what we'll do is we'll create functions for all of these uh, and just hook them up so we'll create a function called um, get card x position we'll create another one called get card y position and a get card angle. Uh, make sure that all three of these are set as pure because it will make it a little bit cleaner. Compile and save and then we go back to our calculate card position. We can now drag out our functions here. So we get the angle. We can see that nothing is happening here. Why is that? Well, if we go to card angle, we have not defined an input and we have not defined an output. So that's why it's looking like it's looking. What we want to do here is we want to have an input that is going to be an index for our card. So we'll say card index. We want to have an output that's going to be, well, in the case of angle, it's going to be a float. And we'll say um, angle. 
and compile and save and go back. Now we can see that the card angle has a card index it takes and an angle that it gives us an output. So the angle goes in here and the card index is what we have as an input over here. So we'll just do a get card index and hook that up here. Now we don't have any logic in there for now, but we'll get back to it. Since we have a good function name here, it doesn't really matter for now. We just know that this should be retrieving the card angle for us and what logic is inside of it is not that important for now. Uh, we're going to do the same for the card y position and card x position. So we add a new variable here, uh, index. This needs to be of the type integer, integer, not float. Uh, the output needs to be of the type, I did not actually change that to integer it seems. Uh, the output here will be the y position. Compile, save and go into the x1. And the x1 should have similarly a card index. Now I don't remember if I, I renamed the, the card index for the other function, but we'll check that in a moment. And this is the x position. Double check the y position. It is called index. Let's be consistent here and call it card index. There we go. Okay, so going back to our calculate a card position, we can now get our card x position, card y position. We just hook them up like so. Everything is beautiful and easily overviewed and understandable. Everyone is happy. Everybody is learning. Great stuff. Okay, so now theoretically we are calculating things and sending them out. Although we all know that we're currently not, right? Because we don't have any code inside of these functions. So now we need to start adding some code here. Now, for now, we can just do some testing. So we can do something simple like we can take the card index, multiply it and say give it a value of uh, multiply by 100, meaning that the index zero will get the value of 100, and this will be our x position, if we send it out like so, and the index one would be 100, index two would be 200, etc. Et uh, for testing, this should be fine. So we're just setting an x value, we're not sending a y value, we're not setting an angle, it's all gonna be consistent. We compile and save and see what this looks like. So we play, we click add a card, we add a card over here, we can see it's a red card, we click again, we can see that the blue card is being added, it's play, being added above and a little bit to the right, according to its index. So we can actually see now that we're starting to get something that could be a card hand, although it doesn't look like a very pretty card hand for now, but it's a start. Very good. I think this might be a good place to stop. So let's recap a little bit about what we have done so far. So we have created uh, some more functionality in our card hand. We have uh, the ability now to, uh, first of all, we save the widget references and we send some information each time we add a card that we should update all the positions of the cards by looping through the widget references that we have Determining a, a card position, which currently only has some placeholder uh, debug code in setting the X position. Uh, and then sending it to each of the different cards and saying with a certain interpolation speed, they should be moving to that location. Inside of each card, we save this information. We go through a gate to see if we're able to use the on tick event, which is determined by uh, if we have reached the destination or not. So every time we're calling on the reposition, we open the gates, and if the has reached position or destination determines that we have reached the destination, it will close it. Otherwise, we will try moving towards that location. I can also see that I have a typo in this macro, so we're gonna be renaming it like so. The macro, simple code, just checks to see if the card knows its dimensions and exists as a physical space as a widget right now, and if it has reached its actual parameter destination in x, y, and angle. Um, then we call on a interpolation towards position function that we created in the blueprint function library, which just uh, uses a delta and an interpolation speed to move towards from a location to a different location. Um, okay, that's not where I wanted to be. Uh, there we go. And 
after that it just updates the render transform of the widget itself with this information that it currently has from the interpolation uh, function in here and that is pretty much what we did in this episode so we're on a good way forwards towards getting something in our hand um, so in the next episode we're going to be in uh, delving deeper into getting more advanced calculations for our positioning of our cards and moving from there so keep on learning take care hopefully you found this video helpful if you liked the video leave a like if you did not like it leave a dislike leave any suggestions or comments you have down below subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future that is all for now keep on learning take care